Hello, hello, everyone. We are listening to the Fight Game, the Business Edition. We have Kevin Schroeder, the Hebrew Hammer. How you doing today, sir? I'm doing great, man. How about you, man? Thank you again for having me on, by the way. Absolutely, absolutely. For everybody who does not know, Kevin Schroeder is actually starting his own mixed martial arts um, gym. It's actually the Triad's first mobile martial arts training center. Um, what led you to uh, start Emma? Uh, well, it was kind of a, it was kind of weird. I, I was just, uh, I've always liked training. I've always loved competing. I love teaching. You know, my first ever job, I taught Taekwondo as, as a teenager. So, you know, it, it's always been a big passion of mine. Um, but I was just kind of driving around and um, I was actually just trying to make a little extra cash. And I was doing a, a DoorDash one day, you know, well, nothing else to do. Easy, easy little part-time gig, you know. And I was doing it and it just kind of like dawned on me that uh, a lot of people are really busy and we don't have time always to, to go to a gym, you know, to go train. <laughs> It's hard. You know, you have a lot of things. That's why, you know, DoorDash and like Instacart and these Postmate things have gotten, I feel so big is because we live in a different kind of society now than maybe we did, you know, like 10 years ago. And on top of that, like I also, my other regular job when I was doing was uh, I worked third shift for a long time. It's hard sometimes to make a six o'clock class, a seven o'clock at night class or a, or a nine, 10 o'clock in the morning class. If you have a little bit of a weirder schedule like me and, and I know a lot of my other friends have schedules like that, too, and they want to train, but they can't. They, they don't have time for it. And um, so between those two and some other things, it kind of popped in my head like, oh, man, like. What if someone just came to my house or, you know, met me somewhere like a like a public park or something like that and, you know, gave me a good workout, you know, because like I said, I can't always make a seven o'clock class. So, hey, if you have a weird schedule and you want to train at, you know, 2.30 a.m., I'm down. We could do it. It's cool. Uh, it's nothing out of the ordinary for me. Uh, for me, like I said, I work third shift and I'm also a professional MMA fighter. Sometimes I can't make those classes. So I have to make my own workouts and, you know, I'm training outside at, you know, two, three, four o'clock in the morning while most people are sleeping, you know, and then every now and then you got some other guy who's up and they're like, Oh, okay. That's, that's a little weird, but I get Mm -hmm. it. I'm more too. So that was kind of where, where it came into play. And the other thing that came into play with it is, the way I was thinking, like a lot of people come up to me and I'm sure you've had it too, you know, being in the martial arts community is the the two biggest reasons I get when people say, Oh man, I would love to train. I would love to do that. Um, the big, the two biggest reasons I get why they don't do it. The first one is, Oh man, I'm not in shape. Fair enough. Um, the only way really to get into shape doing this is just to do it. Like you could do CrossFit, you could run marathons. It's much different then when you're locking up with someone and doing some grappling or throwing punches and kicks, it's a different type of cardio and you don't really get into it until you do it. And the second reason I get a lot is I don't want to look dumb. I feel embarrassed because I don't know what I'm doing. And I I feel like people are going to, you know, look at me and and, and think I suck or whatever. Um, Well, I'm the instructor. So if you're better than me, well, go find somebody else. (laughs) That's fair. So I feel like number two, it kind of takes away that, that pressure of, you know, being around other people. And on top of that, you know, it's in your environment. And I feel like everyone feels much more relaxed in a place that that they feel comfortable with. Instead of just going straight to a gym, it's new. It's, and it can be scary, you know, but if, Hey, you want to work out in your garage, it's not a problem. It's it's your place. It's it's, it's your your sanctuary. You know, Um, I will come to you. I have rolling jujitsu mats. If you want to do jujitsu, I have brand new Muay Thai pads. Um, you know, boxing gloves and, you know, everything you would need um, that you would do at a normal martial arts gym. So number two kind of takes care of number one. I- I'll make you feel more secure, you know, with yourself and everything like that. And then you do the class, man, the, the work, it's going to come off, you know, whether you want to get stronger or lose weight or just get in shape overall, you know, number two takes care of number one, if that makes sense. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So what has the, um, the, the support been like ever since you started the business? And when did you actually start the business? <laughs> yeah, actually, the, the support's been overwhelmingly great so far. Uh, this is kind of crazy, but I, I came up with this idea uh, about three weeks ago. Um, <laughs> so the support is is pretty crazy. The business is definitely brand new, but I already have uh, I already have five people signed up with me as clients. Um 
they all love it, which I'm very, very thankful for. You know, another thing is um, I'm throwing it out right now. If if you see this interview and and things like that, you, your first class is on me. It's free. Um, if you like it, awesome. If not, it doesn't cost you anything. Just make sure you uh, you uh, refer to this uh, this interview, and I'll give you your first class for free, no problem. If you're in the triad, please uh, hit me up. You know, Greensboro, Winston, High Point, Kernersville. You know, if, if you're a little bit farther, if you're like in Durham or something, we, we can work <laughs> something out. I'll make it, but primarily, I, I'm saying in the triad for right now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So um, we're in COVID season. How are you dealing? How would you deal with um, uh, the COVID situation when it comes to mask and everything like that? What are some of the uh, precautions you're taking? Yeah, that's a that's a that's a great question. And that was one of the the first questions I had to ask myself, because, like you said, we live in, you know, we're in COVID. You know, it's a lot of people are worried about it. Um, Two things. Well, the main thing that I'm doing, of course, is um, I sanitate, I sanitize all of my equipment um, before and after every session. Um, I don't care if you put the glove on for for a minute. Uh, we're wiping it down. We're spraying it out. We're making sure it all, whatever germs might be in be in there are done, clean. We're good. Um, the other thing we're doing, especially if you're doing uh, more of the striking part of it, I can do. We can do six feet apart personal lessons uh, i have masks um to put on you know if, if that's not a problem i don't mind doing that at all and i can still be there with you one-on-one -on -one, which is a little bit easier than maybe doing something you know over skype or or zoom but that is also an option i have too if you just ah you know i don't know but i still kind of want that one-on-one -on -one session uh, that, that's not a problem we, we can set it up like i said it doesn't take uh, a lot of room the whole, the whole point of this is, you know, we can do it in your living room. I've literally trained people in, in parking spaces outside. It doesn't take a lot. Um, now for the jujitsu, if you want to do grappling, obviously that's a, that's a little bit more close contact. It's, mm -hmm. you can't really do jujitsu without touching somebody. <laughs> um, exactly. But at the same time, that that mat is always disinfected, you know, two, three times a day. Um, even if even if I don't have even if it's not being used um, before I take it out, I want to make sure, you know, it's sanitized because it is, you know, it's in a bag and stuff like that. You never know what kind of germs might get on there as it's sitting, in, you know, in the car or, or in my house or, or whatever. So, yeah, we're, we're definitely taking precautions. Um, I want to feel I want to make sure everyone feels, you know, super safe and, and comfortable. Um with what we're doing because it is, it's a crazy time we live in. We don't, we still don't really know everything about it, but yeah, there's, there's definitely precautions and, and I'm always open to suggestions. If there's something that, you know, you or a customer or whoever feels that I could do maybe better, please do not hesitate to tell me. I am always looking to improve um, in every aspect of my life. So, so yeah, don't, don't hesitate. Please, please let me know. Yes, sir. Would you ever think about doing like an online training? Jiu-Jitsu. So you have a mobile one and then you have an online one because I know like there have been other um, uh, jujitsu places um, like Gracie, like Gracie mm -hmm. Jiu-Jitsu. Yeah, yeah, online. Gracie Online University. Would you potentially even do that as well, like having your own website and then training so where people actually get their own training in their own living room and they don't even have to be around people during this COVID time? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that was something I was thinking about maybe a little bit later on down the road um, for the maybe uh, not as much necessarily for jujitsu because I, I, me personally, um, I definitely feel like if you're trying to, if you're starting out jujitsu, I think you really need a, another person um, to do it. Uh, maybe after you get a little bit of a, you know, a sense of things. Yeah. There's a lot of things you can do. You can, you can get a grappling dummy or you can do drills at home, but I feel like it's kind of hard to do yes. without an actual person at, at first because jujitsu is, is such an awkward martial art when you first start, you, you, all you get put in all these, you know, unnatural positions that after you do a bunch of times, you know, they become natural. Like when I sit up, like I stand up in base, you know, most people look at me and they're like, what are you doing? Why'd you put your hand out there? I'm like, well, you drill it, you know, 5 billion times. It just becomes muscle memory. Um, but as far as the striking part, I, I have thought about that a little bit more. Um, that's a lot easier. You can kind of do that on your own. If you have someone who can, you know, teach you the details and, you know, refine it a little bit more. Um, so the striking part was in there. I don't know so much about the jiu-jitsu at first, to, to be honest. I got you. I got you. So you already answered this question probably, but I'm going to ask it again. <laughs> no, nah, it's uh, all good, man. What um, is the goal uh, for Emma and what led you to name your company Emma? 
<laughs> no problem. Um, so uh, as far as the, the name, um, I, I came up with it because, like I said, the, the whole thing is it, it's uh, it's mobile. So the, the Emma stands for Elite Mobile Martial Arts. Um, you know, I wanted people to know, like, hey, um, <laughs> we're mobile. Like, let's put it right in the name. You know, and it just kind of, you know, we're elite. You know, I like to make sure that whoever I'm training, I'm giving them the best possible training they can get, you know, at an elite level. You know, I've been training for almost 17 years. I've been doing this, you know, over half my life. This is mm -hmm. something I feel very passionate about. And, um, you know, martial arts. And it just kind of happened where it's like, oh, E-M-M-A, you know. So it kind of worked out well um, how it all kind of, you know, transpired. And as far as, as my goal for it, I, I just I love training and I have such a passion for it. And I know all, all the best it did for me. Um, like when I first started, I was very shy. I was very to myself. Um, I didn't really have a lot of friends. I didn't I, I I couldn't really talk to people like this would have been this would have been no way, no, no way, shape or form. You would have called me and I would have just been sitting here, you know, uh, not saying anything. I'd be a mute, um, you know, and obviously that didn't just, you know, come up over uh, a session. It was over years, but it helped me out uh, so much as far as the the goals of um of elite martial arts is uh, I want to, I want to bring that happiness and that joy and that confidence that it brought me to, to other people. And the other thing is, I just think learning martial arts is a, is a good thing to have, especially nowadays. Uh, you never know with people. I think everyone should have good self-defense skills, you know, some basic jujitsu, some good Muay Thai um, and things like that. And I just, and I just want to make people a little bit happier with their lives, just like the way martial arts made me happy, the way it kind of brought out my personality. And I feel like it could do that for a lot of other people. And I just want to see, and, and I love seeing people get in shape. I think it's, it's one of the best things you can do. Um, it just makes everything feel better. So that's definitely the overall goal is to, you know, help people with not only their, their physical health, but their mental health as well. Exactly, exactly. So just explain also, um, being someone who's been training for 10 years, what are some of the relationships years. that you... <laughs> I mean, not training, teaching. Oh, okay. Teaching for 10 years. Teaching for 10 years what are some of the relationships that you've developed um, over that 10-year span? Uh, yeah, I, I've developed a lot, you know, from little things. Uh, I ran my own kickboxing programs for a little while. Um, I did kind of private lessons here and there. Um, but I was still kind of focusing on, on, on my fight career and my training. Um, but I still love doing it. Uh, some, I'd say that the biggest relationships that, that I personally had um, was, uh, I'd say probably a couple of years ago, um, I would have uh, when senior projects were a big thing. I would have, you know, some, some kids come up to me or, or their parents would be, Hey, Kevin, you know, my, my son, my daughter wants to do a senior project on, um, on kickboxing or, or more or less MMA for the most part. Um, cause you know, it's kind of been a, a bigger thing and I'd be like, yeah, no problem. And, you know, helping some of those kids, um, teach them the basics and fundamentals of, of kickboxing and, and Muay Thai, uh, was really cool. It was really fun because they, they first came in as just doing it as like, you know, oh, this is like a little school project. It sounds kind of neat to them really liking it. And, you know, two of them still train to this day, which I, which I think is awesome. Um, you know, a couple of them moved away, you know, different states and things like that, but they loved it so much so that they, they continued with it. So I think that for me, when, when someone comes in and they're like, oh, I just want to do it because of, you know, a school project or, oh, man, I just, I'm feeling a little big. I want to lose a couple more pounds. You know, could, could you show me some workouts? Yeah, yeah, no problem. You know, and then they continue to do it. Or, you know, they hit me up every now and then like, hey, man, um, I'm in town. Uh, can you do some pad work with me? And I'm like, yeah, no problem. I'd love to. Um, like my friend, uh, my, one of my good friends, uh, Daniel, he, um, I, uh, he's one of the first people I trained, uh, like, from the ground up, like he had, he had no, no experience, no nothing. I, you know, he kind of came to me one day. I knew his brother, and that's kind of how we linked up. And um, I started training him, and we're still friends to this day. We've been friends for uh, I don't know, I think since like 2014 or something like that. So for for a few years, he actually it's funny because he hit me up a couple of weeks ago um, 
random. And it was like, hey, uh, you know, I haven't really done anything. You know, could you could you put me through a workout? And I'm like, yeah, no problem. You know, so I worked with him and, and his girlfriend. And uh, they're both pretty awesome. So it's it's cool to, to build those relationships from something that I already love. Like, it's my passion. I love training. I love teaching. And, and to be able to share that with people and then them kind of have a little bit of a passion for it, too, that blossoms in the, into bigger things just – I can't put a price tag on that, man. It feels amazing. It's amazing. So where can people find you on social media? Your personal page and also your business page. Yes. Uh, my personal page on Instagram is uh, kfighter23. Uh, the business page is Elite Mobile Martial Arts on Instagram and Facebook. Um, for my Facebook, it's my name, uh, Kevin Schroeder. So uh, you can hit me up on either of those. If you want to email me, you can email me at elite mobile martial arts at yahoo.com. And like I said before, just throw it in there one more time. If you mention this interview, your first session's free. Don't even, uh, don't worry about it. If you like it, awesome. If you don't, it'll only hurt my feelings a little bit. No, <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. All right. Yes, sir. Well, thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. Everybody, check out Elite Mobile Martial Arts by Kevin Schroeder. Appreciate awesome. you, man. Nah, man. I appreciate you, man. Thank you. Yes, sir. Have a blessed one. Ah, uh, you too, man.